This video today is going to be a talk about extracting a regulator from your air reservoir. Now this video will cover the regulators that we use to manufacture, uh, market and sell over the last 15 to 20 years. It will also cover the other regulators presently on the market worldwide and other manufacturers regulators over years gone past. Uh, so before we start to talk about how to get them out, I'll talk about putting them in uh, and this is simple simply that no matter whether you've got one of our regulators bought a second-hand regulator of somebody else's make or manufacture off of eBay or off of a shooting website or whether you've purchased a DIY fit one fit regulator from somebody else before you put pop it in make sure that the case and the case o-rings have got a, a nice smear of silicon grease on this one helps put the regulator into the cylinder it makes it easier to slide in it prolongs the life of the o-rings and it also uh, makes it a little bit easier to get the regulator out at a later date now this also goes for the air reservoir hopefully if you've watched one of the other fitting videos you'd have cleaned and polished lightly the inside of your reservoir where the regulator is going to fit and removed any burrs from the breathe hole so likewise you should get a little bit of the silicon grease and put it around the inside of the tube where you're going to fit the regulator and this again will help put it in and then help you get it out at a later date There we go, so that regulator's in. Now, for many of you, getting the regulator out of the reservoir is going to be exceptionally simple because you can both remove the in valve and the outlet valve. And so you've just ended up with an open-ended air reservoir. And so to get the regulator out, no matter what the make and model, it is generally very simple just to push it out using a dowel. Now, it doesn't matter obviously what you use, whether it's wood, plastic or generally a soft metal such as aluminium I wouldn't recommend using a hardened metal or steel but no matter which type of uh, dowel you use to push the regulator out obviously you should make sure this hasn't got any remains of any nails in it or anything if it's wooden uh, the same with the plastic you know a nice piece of new plastic rod or tube uh, make sure that it's clean Especially with the aluminium, make sure that there's no burrs or sharp edges that might scratch the inside of your tube. And then just to be very safe, if you just take some light spirit and give whatever you've got a wipe down, and then you'll know that there's no dirt and grime on there that you're going to leave in the cylinder, which you're going to have to try and get out at a later date. So that should be quite simple. And then hopefully, in this instance, getting the regulator out of the uh, cylinder should be quite easy, and just use the use the rod simply to push it out. So now, if your regulator has been stuck in the cylinder for many years and you've never had it out and it's never been any bother, but you think it's do a service, you might find that the o-rings on the case have deteriorated now if you watch the video to do with o-ring seals you'll see that these go hard and sometimes become semi-liquidy and can glue themselves into the metal after many years of being under high pressure in which case pushing it out as easy as that isn't uh, it's not going to quite be the same and i'd recommend you need to give it a, a quick tap with a soft mallet on the end of the uh, rod and hopefully that'll just break the glue seal between the o-ring and the metal if you've covered it in plenty of silicon grease in the past when you've put it in it should just come straight out but if you've had the regulator fitted by somebody else and they didn't put any silicon on the o-rings then it could be stuck and you'll need to give it a bit of a tap to get it on the move now for most of you that previous section has easily covered how to get your regulator out of your air reservoir you just simply push it out but there's a number of rifles on the market around the world, namely Day States, the Chinese BAM BAM, uh, some Crossmans, and some Brocox, where the outlet valve mechanism is built in to a one piece 
uh, air cylinder come action body uh, and to remove the outlet valve you need a screwdriver or tool to be inserted from the fill valve end. Uh, now if you can't get to that screw because there's a regulator fitted then you can't take the valve out and you can't push the regulator straight out of the end of the tube so you need to be able to extract the regulator from the fill valve end so if you've bought one of our regulators or you've bought a, somebody else's or a second hand one off an internet forum uh, before you put it into your day state BAM, Crossman, uh, Brocock or a number of other rifles if it, you know that you've got to be able to take it out then you need to either modify the regulator or order the regulator brand new from the manufacturer such as yours, with the extraction loop etc already fitted so for instance if you've purchased a regulator like this to fit into your air rifle or this and then once you've received it realize that you need to be able to get it out what do you need to do well this manufacturer in the US for their Crossman regulators fit this loop and so as you can pull it pull the regulator straight out with a hooked hooked extraction rod and if you ordered one of our regulators then we uh, would have done the same for you if it was one of those makes so that you can put in the, the loop and then pull the regulator straight out of the uh, reservoir through the fill valve end so now if you've bought a regulator from somebody and that you've then realized you've got to get it out quite simply all you need to do if you can see this is make yourself a little stainless steel loop put two small holes in your regulator body and then clip the loop in place and that was what you need to do. So if you've ended up buying a regulator, new or second hand, and then realise you've got to be able to get it out that end of the tube, then you can make a, a simple extraction loop. Now, if that's not possible on some regulators, because of how it's designed, or you've purchased a regulator uh, and accidentally pushed it into the tube, not realising that you're going to need to get it out, or you've bought a second hand gun, and it's got a regulator in and you're wondering how to get it out the other method which you can use on a number of regulators uh, such as ours is make an extractor that screws in to where the uh, pressure adjuster screw is so a number of people have uh, asked for these in the past and so here we have a, a cleaning rod with a standard uh, M4 cleaning rod thread on it and there we have a nut made up of the same size screw as the adjuster and so once your regulator's in the gun you can screw this into the regulator and pull this out like that which is also quite a quite a simple technique now being as we're covering other manufacturers regulators as well if you found yourself with the regulator stuck in your air rifle and this is the technique that you want to use to get it out then Firstly, uh, unscrew the screw if you can to give you a longer piece of thread to screw into and that will also let you see what size thread it is that you need to fit onto the end of a rod uh, or some form of extraction device. Now, these threads at the adjuster screw end are typically M10 by 1, which means it's 10 millimeters diameter by one tooth per millimeter so m10 by one there's a number of manufacturers use that thread there's a couple that use m8 by one and then m12 by 1.25 and then the other thread that you might come across is very simply 8th bsp which is 8th british standard pipe so if you're wondering how to get your regulator out of the air reservoir if you found it stuck stuck down in there and you're wondering what size thread it is at this end it's most likely going to be in order m10 by 1 
M8 by 1, 8 BSP or M12 by 1.25. They're the most popular threads I've ever come across uh, for the adjuster screw at the back. And so if you make or have a tool made up, then you should be able to uh, pull the regulator out that way. Now, on one of the pictures we looked at a second ago, there was these two regulators, which as you can see, they didn't have it anywhere for you to attach a thread uh, at that end, although you could have had an extraction loop fitted, but if you, you found that you've got one of these regulators somebody's fitted uh, without thinking about it and you're wondering how to get it out, the other thing that you could use is, if you've not got one of these, they'd probably have one at your local car or motorcycle garage, or you could get one from a, a DIY or good hardware shop, and this is simply a pair of uh, telescopic hooks hardened steel pincers and as you can imagine with that and this particular regulator you could grab hold the end of the nailed cap and then hopefully pull the regulator out of the uh, air reservoir now the opposite to what we've just looked at is not getting the regulator out of the fill valve end, but on some manufacturer's guns where the fill valve is stud lock glued or roll riveted into place. And therefore you've got to be able to take the regulator out the gun towards the outlet valve. So we'll look at this and how you can do this. Now hopefully on the front of this regulator, you can see this new Mark V, there's a thread in the centre of the piston. Now a number of manufacturers do this, and so that thread is normally M4, which means millimetres, metric 4mm, or 5mm. In some cases it's 3mm or 6mm. But once you've took your cylinder off and you've had a look down, it should be quite easy to ascertain whether it's three, four, five or six millimetre thread uh, that you need to uh, get your hands on to extract the regulator. Uh, if you're in America or you've bought an American regulator, uh, the thread is quite liable not to be metric as the Americans still tend to use the imperial threads. And so you're most likely going to be looking for a number five UNC or UNF, a number 8 UNC or UNF, or quite often a quarter UNF or UNC uh, thread. And then you get a bolt of that sort and you should be able to extract the regulator from the end of the cylinder. So, Here we have the regulator in the front of the cylinder. Now the easiest thing is if you know what size thread it is, ours are M5, and if you've got either a very long bolt or a piece of threaded rod, then just fit it into the cylinder, screw that into the front of the piston, and then use a pair of pliers and pull the uh, regulator straight out. If you haven't got a piece of long threaded rod or a long bolt, then a normal, a normal sort of uh, M5 socket head etc. Will, will do the trick just as well. So to do this and to get it down inside the tube, you can either put a knob of grease into the head and then use your screwdriver or uh, Allen key to stop the screw falling off so that the grease holds it in place. Uh, the alternative is if you've got some small magnets put them on the side of your screwdriver or on the side of your allen head bolt and then you can hold that in place to put it down the cylinder and screw it in hopefully without it uh, falling off the end although the magnets do have a tendency if they're very strong to hold it onto the side so that's that and then you can either if you've got a piece of uh, cord attached around the head hopefully use that and pull it and, and uh, whoops, pull it straight out. Now, if the regulator's been in there for some time 
and it's locked seems to be locked into place because the o-rings have, have glued it into place then the other thing to do is get yourself a piece of threaded rod uh, and either a piece of wood or some washers etc and then screw that into screw that into place and then if you hold the uh, hold the piece of threaded uh, rod tight and use your spanner on there and then you should be able to wind the spanner round and round and round and that will pull gradually pull the regulator up until it comes out of the uh, until it comes out of the tube that's if it's been in there for a number of years and become very solid but uh, hopefully that there you go it should just come just should come out quite easily by that method now the other thing is again some of you might have accidentally installed a regulator uh, quickly without thinking about it that hasn't got a thread in and there's no way on earth that the end cap's going to come out in which case you can use something like these uh, screw extractors these are sizes one to six but they can uh, uh, become larger than this and these are very simply used these have got a, a left hand thread on them and they would screw and lock lock into place without really causing any damage and then you could use some pliers or a pair of grips on the end of these uh, to pull the regulator out but that's only if there's not a thread in the front of the regulator to start with. Uh, likewise, depending on the shape and the design of the regulator, you could possibly still also use the extraction grips on the front of it to pull it out. And then finally, a rather crude but very effective technique, whether you've got a non-removable fill valve or non-removable outlet valve is simply to protect the end of your cylinder with some masking tape and then make sure that you use a piece of rubber not hardwood, concrete or melamine etc but a piece of nice thick rubber simply hold the cylinder vertically and drop it and then very shortly if you keep doing this gently, as you'll see, if the, that's it, camera's focused, you can get the regulator out by that method. I've known a number of people uh, fit regulators into day states, etc., and then think, oh my God, how do I get it out? And simply by bouncing it on a good hard surface, but with a good thick rubber sheet, you can easily extract the regulator. But very, please be very careful doing this as I don't want to hear that any of you have damaged your rifles.